Huh? I call to order the Gladstone City Council meeting for May 9th, 2017. It's 6.30 p.m. Hello, everybody. And here's the holiday for today. It's National Teachers Day. So, yay for our teachers. Um, tonight, we have quite a few items on our consent agenda. Um, approval of the April 11th Council meeting and the April 25th Council meeting and work session. Approval of financial reports, approval of the April check register and bank balances, legal project cost estimate, department heads monthly report for April of 2017, approval of Oregon liquor license application for the new owners of High Rocks Restaurant. And our regular agenda items are update on the city partnership with Latest Motors for the proposed bike night events, proposed street vacation to vacate portion of the right of way abutting 150 East Clarendon Boulevard, ordinance 1473 public hearing to vacate right of way on West Clackamas Boulevard, resolution 1104 adoption of the city of Gladstone sewer master plan, ordinance 1472 granting a non-exclusive cable franchise to Comcast of Oregon, authorization to solicit bids for exclusive towing services contract for the police department, and approval of a new OLCC liquor license for Hollywood Beverage at 436 West Arlington. Jackie, could you please call the roll? Councillor Mercero? Here. Councillor Reisner? Here. Councillor McMahon? Here. Councillor Johnson? Here. Councillor Neese? Here. Councillor Sickman? Here. Mayor Stemple? Here. Could everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, business from the audience. When you submit your yellow card, please note <coughs> on your card whether you would like to speak for, during the general business from the audience or whether you want to speak on a particular consent agenda item. And we'll call you up accordingly. Um, before we proceed with the regular agenda, I would like to say a few words regarding the City Council. Most of you have heard this before, especially if you've been to Planning Commission meetings, but I think that it's important that everyone understand our limitations. As we discuss and consider matters, there are laws and rules that we have to use to base our decisions on. These start at the federal and state level, then filter down to our city's comprehensive plan, city charter codes and ordinances. And we do not have the luxury to randomly make decisions, but instead have to be consistent and take a path that is defensible. There are many times when we may have strong personal feelings related to a topic, but we need to set those aside and limit ourselves to the framework our city documents provide. My goal is to keep this meeting respectful, engaging and on task and hope that you all will help me do that. And I want to thank all of you for coming and participating in this process. It's important and you are all very highly valued. Thank you. Um, first item is agenda additions or corrections. Anybody have anything? Just uh, real briefly, I, there's just a couple of clarifications. You have in front of you a couple of yellow sheets that were items that were um, <coughs> added, not added, but at least clarified on uh, number 13 and number 14. Um, and then also tonight I passed out uh, the bike night um, advertisement and some email uh, thread that uh, kind of gives everybody an up, up to date. I know Councilman Neese will, will probably lead, lead that discussion and, and update everybody as to where we're at with the bike night events. So, Anything it. else? I would um, like to move item 14 on, up through on to uh, regular agenda. Uh, we've never had an agenda item under business from the council, and this is a an item I think that. Uh, so move that up to the first agenda item. Uh, so sure. Under 13 for the first. The first. I think a lot of the people that are here are here because of the library issue. Okay, it gets to hear it faster. Sounds good to me. All right. So we'll move that to the first item in the regular agenda. All right. So the next is business from the audience. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Susan Liston. <coughs> Get 
microphone And remember to say your name and <coughs> your address or the city that you live in is fine. Can I remember? <laughs> Hi, Susan Liston, 550 East Exeter Street, Gladstone, Oregon. Um, Gladstone City Mayor Tammy Stemple and fellow councilors. This is regarding the city administrator position. The City of Gladstone says it is important for a city administrator to be able to communicate professionally and effectively with all citizens. Part of the requirements for this position include the following quote. The ideal candidate will be approachable by all citizens, staff, and council and will communicate effectively. He, she will establish and maintain effective working relationships with other employees, the mayor, the council and the public. Unfortunately, I have failed to see our current city administrator, Eric Swanson, consistently demonstrate the interpersonal and communication skills required to fulfill the duties of a city administrator. From my own experience, and after watching Mr. Swanson's interactions with others, including city council members during council meetings and during the recent city council planning session, Mr. Swanson seems able to meet the above criteria only when he is in control, doesn't misinterpret information presented by someone else, and he is in agreement with whomever he is talking to. Thank you, Mayor and Councilors, for your time and for your service on behalf of our city. Thank you. Thank you. Last pool. <coughs> Good evening, Les Poole. I live on Cornell Place here in Gladstone. I got three hours sleep and just drove here from Klamath Falls, so if I fall asleep, I apologize. Um, we'll talk quick. <laughs> I just want to follow up on something that I think is very, very critical. Um, March 28th, I came in and presented uh, some information to the public and to the council and to the city staff and it was pretty straightforward. It had to do with the Webster Road property and uh, my comments were that if one were to look at the resolutions and the paperwork involving that troubling piece of property that was originally condemned, one would find that the most recent resolution overrides the resolution that one finds online that declares it's a park. Now before someone gets on, on next door Gladstone and says I want to give away the park, let me make a simple request. I would recommend that everyone involved with that property very, very carefully look at the documents, consider what it was condemned for and why, and understand that it was condemned for two purposes. For a park, open space, and for a commercial purpose for a library. If the library isn't going to go there, we still have a piece of property there, or part of that property that, that would be considered for the library or for a commercial use. So my point is to f fulfill, fulfill what the condemnation was about a couple of things need to happen and one is we need to decide where the boundaries of the park are and we need to establish legally the status of the property because the 2009 resolution overrode the 2007 resolution. Therefore the, the measure to protect the parks, any park created by resolution, if the 2007 resolution is not in effect then we need to change that. Um, a couple of other very quick thoughts. One is I would fight very hard for part of that property to be a park. Um, I have fought for parks so many times I can't count them. <laughs> Secondly, it's troubling that I hear that somehow it's going to be a gravel pit. It was never going to be a gravel pit. That is the most specious, ridiculous thing I've heard in all of this. Mining, the technical term for removing rock, would, would have occurred with a store with, that was originally going to be there, with a library, or anything else. So, that being the case... Time's up. <laughs> <laughs>
that being the case, we need to resolve this and we need to take some action and clarify that. Okay. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Linda Cosgrove. <coughs> I'm Linda Cosgrove. I live at 190 West Dartmouth Street, and I uh, wanted to mention on the uh, stormwater projects that uh, I had brought up before that we already have $150 a year uh, for uh, on our utilities for the transportation tax that we cannot write off on our taxes, and then this would be another $120 a year, and then plus there's a $50 uh, billing fee on there for it's an old sewer fee and we can't write that off on our taxes either and I would like to have a statement at the end of the year for the stormwater um, tax to declare and take off my uh, Oregon taxes. Also I don't think it's the responsibility of the residential homeowners of Gladstone uh, to have their tax dollar used to subsidize commercial properties such as rentals and uh, it's up to the uh, property owner to pay for whatever upgrades uh, need to be taken care of, whether it's sidewalks, sewer, water, or trees, and not the other residential homeowners. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lonnie Saunders. <coughs> I'm writing as fast as I can. Mm -hmm. Lanny Saunders, I live at 675 Barbary Place in Gladstone, and I'm speaking, <coughs> excuse me, I'm speaking on behalf of the Gladstone Public Library Foundation tonight, and I really just want to thank several people. We recently lost our storage facility at the city shops, and we've been trying very hard to find another site. I want to thank Mayor Stemple, Con Councilor Niece, Jackie Betts. They have done, they have gone the extra mile to try to help us <coughs> find a solution. I also want to give a great big thank you to Greg Alexander. A month ago, I had never met him, and then he showed up at my door one day and said, I have an idea, and we've solved the problem until the book sale this year, so I really appreciate that. <clears throat> also, I want to thank Susan Liston and Deborah Hansen. They had a garage sale last weekend and donated the proceeds to the foundation. These people all exemplify the very best of Gladstone, and they make me very proud to be part of the community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Okay, Gary, and how do you pronounce your last name? Bukowski. <coughs> Gary Bukowski. Good evening. Uh, my name is Gary Bukowski, and I live in the unincorporated area just outside the border of Gladstone. I'm here on the behalf of the library board being one of the new members that I got the short straw to read the letter. <laughs> uh, this, uh, I believe you have all received a <coughs> copy of this. <coughs> to it. In the May Gladstone Library Advisory Board meeting, a motion was made and passed unanimously to strongly urge the, city, the Gladstone City Council to discontinue the pursuit of its lawsuit against Clackamas County and its effort to enforce the now avoided IGA between Gladstone and the county. <coughs> Additionally, the Gladstone Library Board requests that an effort be made by the council to heal the rift created by this lawsuit and to engage in cooperative efforts to support both communities, the unincorporated Oak Lodge community plus Gladstone, in achieving new library facilities to enrich both communities and all library patrons. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be discussing that in a few minutes. And Lonnie Saunders. It's me again. Lonnie <laughs> Saunders, 675 Barbary Place, Gladstone, Oregon. And again, I'm representing the Library Foundation. <laughs> We would like to offer our support to the Library Advisory Board in their recommendation that the Council drop the suit with the County. We would encourage all the parties to work together to resolve the library issue. 
and the foundation offers their support and we will do anything we can to help in this effort. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, the last one I have is Bill Osborne. Bill Osborne, 7160 Monte Verde. Um, I know, of course, everybody's familiar with the recall that's going on, and some of the, the issues are um, people acting like a bully or unprofessional. And one of the things I expect, and I think we all expect out of our elected officials, is to set examples for us to follow. You know, we expect you guys to do good and, and uh, you know, fight the good fight and take the, the high ground on things. Uh, I've been real disappointed to find that most of the uh, no on the recall campaign has been a lot of mudslinging to the point of even one of my volunteers that went out and helped this community uh, on uh, the no on the recall site of Councillor Sickman and Johnson they have posted uh, mine and, and his criminal backgrounds right down to every traffic ticket we've gotten from speeding to well there was a time that I got pulled over and had expired tags and I, I received a ticket for that. I'm really disappointed. I don't think that the accusation of bullying is real clear. When I make that accusation, I'm not talking about kids out on the playground beating each other up for their lunch money. I'm talking about mistreating people, belittling people. One of the claims was Mr. or Councillor Reisner not being able to look at the city attorney bill. And I was looking through that tape the other day and the way he was horribly disrespected, cut off. Councillor Johnson made a motion right in the middle of him talking and he never even got an answer. Um, it just got really ugly and we expect more out of you guys. Certainly, you know, I'll let you know if, uh, if I don't think things are up to par. Now, <laughs> one of the claims on the uh, petition against the, the recall is that there's no investigation going on. And I know you guys worked real hard to, to try and keep uh, from people, the public, getting these accusations of bullying, harassment, and discrimination against a couple of you. I was just wondering if there's an investigation going on on the city level or the attorney general, or if this is just being quietly swept under the rug. Uh, and I think the community deserves to know about this since this is an allocation of, or allegation of harassment and bullying from a number of our council members against another one. And I think that is just completely unacceptable regardless of whether it's a council or a business or anything, but certainly from people we expect to lead by good example. So I was just wondering if anybody would like to answer that because obviously I'm not the only one making allegations of bullying and harassment. <coughs> That's all I have to say. I'd love to hear an answer on uh, what's going on with this. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Osborne. I Anybody have else? nothing further, Madam Mayor. All right, so the next item is the consent agenda. <coughs> Would anybody like to discuss it, pull something? I would like to pull number six. All right, so we're pulling item six, which is approval of the Oregon Liquor License Application, new owner of the High Rocks Restaurant at 915 East Arlington. Anything else? Make a motion to approve consent, agi consent agenda items one, two, <coughs> three, four, and five. I'll second that. Motion was made by Councillor Kim Sickman and seconded by Councillor Pat McMahon. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. So then we move on to correspondence. Mm -hmm. So then we move that to our regular. Number six. Oh, but don't we then just move that automatically to the regular agenda if oh. you're pulling it? No, we can discuss it right now. We can. We okay, because I thought we had to move it to the regular agenda. I don't believe so. Well, if we just went through the rules. And under our current rules, we're supposed to move it to the regular, move it agenda. To the oh, regular okay. agenda. Perfect. But yeah. it's, you're, you're correct. It's we'll what we... It the other way. But you're right. Okay. Perfect. You're right. So, so how would you guys like to do it? Just discuss it right now or move it to the regular agenda? I'd like to just make the comment I was going to make and okay. if we can approve it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I just want everybody to know that uh, High Rocks Pub 
which has been around for a while. Uh, it was owned, and I say was, and I'll clarify that, by Larry slash Hook and Elaine Herman. They've owned it for 26 years. Uh, it's now been purchased by another group, uh, Mark uh, Schroeder and Rolana Weaver, and they're asking for the liquor license. So it's not going to the same people that it has been going to. Uh, but uh, I hope uh, people use High Rocks uh, and, and use the new people. Uh, and just wanted to note that. <coughs> uh, and I believe that's everything i got to say on that one. Would somebody like to make a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve the Oregon Ligger license for High Rocks Restaurant at 915 East Arlington. Do we have a second? Second. Motion was made by Councillor Linda Neese and seconded by Councillor Kim Sickman. Do we have any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Item 6 is passed. Next item is correspondence. We have none. We have none. All right, then we move on to the regular agenda. We've moved item 14 to be first, which is recommendation from the library board regarding the capital IGA. Um, library Council Liaison Reisner wants to discuss this. Yeah, uh, last week at the library board uh, meeting, as uh, you just heard, they uh, discussed at length uh, amongst uh, well themselves, and uh, there were several, I think about a half a dozen uh, citizens uh, about this item, and uh, took a unanimous vote asking that we um, discontinue our lawsuit against the county and to uh, reach out and see uh, what can be done to get a uh, new library going uh, sooner than later. And uh, so as the, the liaison, liaison, I uh, um, am bringing up uh, before you uh, for consideration and, uh, and discussion. Do we have anybody that wanted to speak on this item? I do not have anyone, no. Okay. So what do you want to do? Do you want to see if we make a motion to drop it or just have further discussion? Well, um, I think... Uh, appropriate thing to do to continue uh, discussion would be to make a motion so um, I'd like to offer one up that I, I move that we accept the recommendation from the library board and instruct the city attorney to take steps to drop the lawsuit ag regarding the IGA against the against Clackamas County do we have a second can I second what can I second it so we can vote on it mm-hmm mm -hmm. I second it. Motion was made by Councilor Reisner, seconded by Mayor Tammy Stemple. Do we have any further discussion? Yes. I'd like to offer, <coughs> with what's been happening and with the meeting that we had with the library board, and it was a very positive meeting, And but after doing a little more in-depth research and getting a better understanding, I don't want to do anything that's going to jeopardize us from the library board district for, for funding because we need that additional funding that we currently have. And I don't want to see us pull, <coughs> make us smaller, but I do like the concept of having two libraries, one in Oak Grove and one in Gladstone. I like that concept. And I should have mentioned that. That was part of the discussion is a, a two library uh, in back when this was uh, agreed to, I believe it was in 09 or, uh, or 11. I, there's been several IGAs. Uh, the, uh, the plan and the thought at the time was having just one library for Gladstone and uh, Oak Grove Jennings Lodge. And uh, that plan uh, has, uh, well, ha hasn't materialized. 
So a second one has been, been talked about. The uh, um, political climate has uh, is changed over the last uh, 12 to 18 months. And, and so as, as, in my opinion, personalities. And so I think we need to um, do a lot more talking and uh, reaching out to each other instead of digging in heels and um, having a, a go at it in a courtroom. I think we should uh, sit down in a conference room and work out a, a new plan. And one of the things we need to consider too is where are we going to get the additional funding and how we're going to get it. And we need to, and that is going to be major. And um, and we need to be fiscally, you know, because we can't go after taxpayer dollars. And that's because and that is has been said, so we cannot do that. Yeah, there's there's barely enough money to build one library after you stretch it with bonding and whatnot. I mean, there's there's literally just one pool of money, and it's been promised now in two different places. How do you propose to take a pool of money that will barely build one library and now build two libraries? Well, we've, um, in a very real way, we have stopped any discussion moving forward. So we don't have the option of looking at uh, what other paths we can take because we've built a brick wall. Um, maybe I'm misunderstanding something, but I thought we had a mediation with the county that we were involved with to spark that conversation, and I believe it did. I believe it's ongoing still. That's true. Um, but they have they say they cannot negotiate or discuss particulars with us until the lawsuit is dropped. You know, we kind of went through this whole deal with the county on our sewer plant that we no longer have any control over. Yep, um, that is true. We do not. And so I'm awfully concerned. Um, I believe at this point, I believe at least with the lawsuit looming, it makes the county at least consider our options. Um, and I just can't see. And, and the other part of it is, is we probably should have some discussion with our legal counsel before anything like this was. I mean, this is a pretty serious step, and we've gone a long ways on this already. Um, and it was a unanimous vote at the time to do that based on a lot of legal advice from our counsel. Um, so just to go off of a letter from our library board um, that we've got no solid numbers from the county. We've got um, no idea of where this, do, this new district line would draw. Um, is it going to be just a Gladstone library and we would just be receiving um, revenue from 11,600? Or would we continue our 20,000 service area that we have now? Uh, you know, there's way too many unanswered questions mm -hmm. to just stop the lawsuit. I, I'm all in favor of continuing the conversation that's been started. I think we're at a point where we can no longer have that conversation because of the lawsuit. I think, I think that's a <coughs> good story that they would like to tell. And I, th I'd have right. to, I have to agree. I think that they brought this upon themselves by trying to unilaterally just say this IGA is done, we're, we're going to dis discontinue it just like that after we had worked for a couple of years to work and get this to a stage where we thought we could start building or get close to it. Then they want more plans, we get them to them. Then they want master plans, we get it to them. And then they just say, no, we're going to pull the IGA out. No. Uh, we need to continue with the lawsuit right now until we can get a lot further clarification to stop right now is foolish. We have the upper hand. We need to keep that. They started at, what, 200000 and they keep coming back more and more. So, I mean, they are budging. So, no, I'm not going to approve this. All right, well, we have a motion and a second. Could we just vote on it, take a roll call vote? Yeah. Or do we want to discuss it further? Well, one thing I wanted to, to um, comment on what uh, Councilor Sickman Granted, I, I did vote originally back last year to, to proceed with, with the lawsuit, 
a lot of information has has come out. Plus, as I mentioned, think, you know, uh, there's been some changes, and I I think that with um, a lot of new players that are now involved, that we can't uh, we won't well, I'm not say can't we won't be able to go forward, and the uh, the the longer that we take to start building, uh, the more it's going to cost us. The uh, the uh, the 1.5 million is going to continue shrinking in uh, uh, in value to to a point where it's not going to make much difference anyway. If we you know uh, get I don't know I've, I've you know I've heard anywhere from like 200 250 thousand to 800 thousand. I mean th those are numbers that have been been thrown out, and I think that uh, we need to be you know thinking of of what uh, our citizens and patrons are wanting us to do uh, rather than you know what's uh, expedient and and I think also we sh we sh uh, don't get me wrong, but I think if we were to drop the loose lawsuit if uh, push comes to shove, we could um, re refile in the future. I may, I may be wrong, being that you know I'm a teacher, not a lawyer. But also, as to what you said about uh, needing to sit down with the attorney, I don't think anything has really changed since the last time that we met with uh, our city attorney in uh, executive session when we talked about this. I don't. So I don't see putting it off. To uh, consult with our attorney will will be any benefit. Okay. Well, we have a motion. Well, um, I think David does need to give us, you know, direction and and make sure that we're doing the right thing. And I think that it's important that we hear from him. But I'm also going to um, was we have been listening to the library and we hear what they're saying and I want to see them have a library just as much as everybody else does and we've got to make sure that we're doing it the right way. I would like to table this till the first meeting in June. I would like us to sit down, come up with a plan of where we can get dollars, how, how we can orchestrate this and come to the county commissioners, tell them this is our plan, this is what we're going to do and if they're willing to be more open and then we can say we will drop a lawsuit if you will work with us. They've already made a statement that they would help us get funding and it wouldn't be through taxes and that they would help get behind us with the community and to help make this come to life. Do you want to withdraw your motion and table it till June? Mm, no, I'd like Okay. We go forward. I'd like to make a comment. <coughs> Uh, I agree with Councilor McMahon. I would probably make it a little bit stronger. I think he used the word foolish. I would have said it's stupid. He probably used a better word. But I don't think it's the right thing to do. All right, any more comments? Can you do a roll call, please, Jackie? Yes, thank you. Councillor Mercero. The motion is to drop the lawsuit. Okay. Uh, no. Councillor Reisner. Yes. Councillor McMahon. No. Councillor Johnson. No. Councillor Neese. Yes. Councillor Sickman. No. Mayor Stimple. Yes. It did not pass. I'm sorry, folks. All right, the next item on our agenda is seven update on city partnership with Latest Motors, specifically the proposed bike nights in downtown Gladstone. Amanda, um, do you have staff here with you? Uh, I have the general manager of Latest Motors, um, John. John, come on up. Okay. <laughs> don't, leave her, don't leave her up here by yourself. Yeah, leave me up here. 
helmet. <laughs> you With the helmet, fine. it was obvious. You were fine. Bef uh, this is Amanda and John, and they're with Lattice Motors. But before they make their presentation, I would like to share with the audience. This past Thursday evening, they did their first event at um, Bogey. Bogey. And I ha and I attended, and it was an awesome turnout. So with our partnership and what we're wanting to do here in Gladstone is going to be absolutely phenomenal. It was wonderful people that they brought in, people from outside our area. I think Vogies did a, a wonderful night that night. It was very well packed. And a lot of people that used to, um, that attended had lived in Gladstone and moved away and haven't been back in a number of years and was very impressed with the community and and the openness that we offered. And uh, so I'm excited about this program that they're wanting to do. Go ahead, Amanda. Hi, I'm Amanda Zito. I'm the events coordinator and graphic designer at Latest Motors, Harley Davidson, and Triumph. Um, our proposal is to create a bike night in par partnership with the city of Gladstone um, that takes up um, Portland Avenue from Clarendon to Dartmouth. So if everybody can hear oh, you. sorry. How about now? Is that better? Perfect. Cool. Thank you. Awesome. Our uh, proposal is to create a bike night that takes up part of downtown um, on Portland Avenue from Dartmouth to Clarendon. Mm -hmm. um, and as you said, we did the first one last Thursday at Part of Bogies, and it was fantastic, and everybody was really excited about it. And when we mentioned that we were going to close off the street, everybody got really excited and <laughs> said that they were going to go and get their friends and bring them to the next one. Um, our proposal is to do the first and Thursday of the month from May to September. Mm -hmm. um, half of the street will be dedicated to bike parking, and the other half of the street will be dedicated to vendors. Um, and we're hoping that we can grow this and get all kinds of vendors to come on, on that half of the street. Um, the center of the street will be dedicated to the emergency vehicle lane, um, as stated in the application. Um, uh, so we're closing down that block from 7 to 9 p.m., just two hours. Um, we don't want to make it bigger than it needs to be. Um, and uh, so we'll have live music every third Thursday um, and a uh, PA system on the first Thursday of the month. Um, we'll have food carts, and Vogie's does great food, and the card room, um, and the Happy Rock coffee shop. Thank you. Um, we do raffle prizes um, from Latest Motors, Harley Davidson, and Triumph. And uh, and uh, I discussed this with you guys before, but um, we, we were just asking for barricades from Public Works for the north and south end of the street, and uh, the detour for the TriMet. I think that's it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Does staff have anything on this? Uh, we don't have a copy of the application. Yeah, so no. So this specific. this will all be processed by staff tonight. <coughs> we just wanted to make everyone aware of, of kind of what's what's happening, the timing. Uh, one thing I'll, I will add is that we will we will at one of these events provide some of the downtown revitalization information mm -hmm. um, because we thought that was a great venue to share share the status of that project, um, especially because it's is a downtown event. Mm -hmm. Can everybody hear okay in the back? I just want to make sure that that the mics are working right. Okay. <laughs> and this is a great partnership working w with them. And um, and it's a great opportunity for businesses to get involved and we're um, Amanda and I are going to be going out visiting the business community and talking with the businesses and so there's additional for them to promote their business as well so it's it's a win-win for all and, and for the community to to come as well hopefully this will get the pizza joint rolling a little bit faster to get <laughs> yeah. all done and in <laughs> we're <out>. trying <laughs> <laughs> right next to the uh, two or two or three businesses down from the coffee shop oh, yeah right. yeah we'll, we'll there's a brand new there they still have paper up they're not done yet but next to Santa Lake <laughs> what, what everybody should probably know is that we we tend to do these type of events at the store right off the the highway and we when we especially when we cross promote them with our our advertising campaigns we get a fairly big turnout and it will be a big draw for the city so it, it will kind of re reintroduce the city to a very large community from the local cities nearby Oregon City and, and the likes will, will probably come over so I think the local businesses in the area will really benefit from it a lot and, and that's kind of the idea is to 
is to bring people to, to the center of town and, and kind of lift it up a bit. And they've also partnered with the community festival as well, and they're going to be having bikes on display there. Okay. And so they're, um, they're becoming quite involved with Gladstone, and we're glad to see that. <laughs> How's the race business going? The race business is going well. We're the race team is leaving in the morning to go racing. Oh, okay, all right. I know they were leaving last time we were, we were yeah. over by you. Yeah. Will, will they be? Uh, will the truck be able to make it through at some point in time to one of these events? Or I, I don't think so. It's in the middle of the race season. The truck right now is on its way to uh, Virginia. Virginia, and then from there it goes to Jersey. So yeah. other side of the world. Yeah, yeah. Side, yeah. <laughs> they're they're quite busy. Yeah. But good luck in the race season. Thank today. you. Thank appreciate you. it. Yeah, we need it. Yeah. Jackie, do we have anyone who wants to speak on this agenda item? Not on this item. Thank you. I support the idea. Uh, I am a car guy, uh, and it's helped put on the, the cultural festival car show for the last three years, mm -hmm. and uh, I've wanted to uh, get more bikes involved and, and join into the show. Uh, whether the, our club puts it on and, and you guys join or we work the thing together, uh, we've actually got the, at least we had, I believe we still got, uh, from Arlington all the way down to the high school if we have enough spots. And it would be pretty neat to fill it all up with classic cars and bikes. Uh, so keep that in mind. <laughs> what When is it? It's first weekend in August. August. First Sunday yeah. in August. Yeah, we are doing the yeah. bike show this yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're yeah. Tom, you've been really busy, and you and I need to connect because, yes, they are part of the show this year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. So. <laughs> <laughs> I believe we have someone that we wants do. to We do. Dr. Bob Everett. <laughs> Right here. Or do you if, want me to come no, Monica. We need more seats. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Amanda. Hi, uh, this is Bob Everett, uh, 18235 Stonewood Drive, um, and I'm representing the uh, community festival. And and when they came up, I thought this was a great time to uh, mention that they will be involved in the car show, um, as it was mentioned early, earlier, and they are going to have some participation in that. I hope we can get a few little representation in the parade. Uh, I hope so, too. And I do want to thank them from the festival board and everything else for their, they gave a, a very generous donation for the festival and uh, it will be uh, put to good use, that's for sure. So for entertainment and other items around and I do appreciate that very much and they're very open. So I'm excited about this and we will have a booth down there. So, so because this is just an update, we don't need to make a motion. Right, I, we just wanted to make sure we had an opportunity to, to let everybody know about the TriMet um, redirection and some of the other things that are going to be part of it. There's a there's a email thread that I attach to the to the flyer that has all of the uh, city as well as latest motor officials that are involved. So real good group effort to kind of pull this together at the last minute. But I think the the thing that we all left with was saying that this we're going to flex since we have multiple events. If we see something that works or doesn't work, you know, we we can change as we go. So. We appreciate appreciate you running this down. So mark your calendars, the first and third Thursday of each month. And I'm assuming this is going to be in the newsletter and on our website. Right. We so have, so we'll have it have in, the our, information. in our okay. May newsletter, and, and uh, we'll continue to promote it uh, in partnership with, with Latis. Well, thank you very much. Thanks, Amanda. Thank you, John. Thank you. All right, next is item 8, which is the proposed street vacation. Consider consenting to the petitioner's request to vacate a portion of right-of-way abutting 150 East Clackamas Boulevard. Do you want to give the process, or do you want me to read it? or? No, I'm happy to. That's, that's fine. I, you actually kind of have two, two items on this, uh, you'll notice, on your agenda. Um, the one that you uh, have in front of you yeah, now, yeah. and then a follow-up, which is an ordinance. Um, one thing I just wanted to clarify well, first of all, so vacations of right of way, you don't see these too often, but it, it's, I guess, sort of like it sounds. Basically, it's uh, generally a, a property owner making a request uh, to the city to say, 
I would like to use this property in some way or I need it for something. Uh, I think the applicants here tonight and can go into that uh, during the hearing uh, if we get to that point. Uh, and state law allows a process for uh, cities to say, okay, we, we agree that uh, the, the right-of-way isn't necessary and uh, we uh, release it uh, basically as right-of-way or vacate it. Um, on the, uh, the part of the, uh, the process, so there, there are, there's sort of an initial request that's being asked of the council, and if you were to answer that with a yes, a consent, then you would move on to um, the next item, which is the actual hearing and, and considering the ordinance. Y you're a, a neighboring property owner in this case. Uh, the city is. So uh, one of the things that the law says is that there has to be consent amongst those that are affected. Uh, and so given that the city's a property owner, um, we thought it was appropriate to come to the council first and say, would you consent to the uh, basically the filing of the application? Um, to be clear, that doesn't mean that you've already made a decision. Um, it means that you don't think uh, that, that the city would have a problem with releasing this property, but part of the process is also hearing from other affected uh, individuals. And so um, I just wanted that to be clear for the record that if you decide to say, yes, we'll consent to this application, uh, that doesn't mean you've already made a decision on the hearing itself. All right. Do we have any other staff? comments on this? I'll just mention um, that this has gone through uh, planning commission. Uh, when was the, was that the last, count, the last planning commission meeting or is this, uh, I think it was March? Okay. March. And so the first process, the first agenda item will address whether we consent to vacating once that's, or consent to giving, giving the property or providing the property for the vacation. Then the second item would be the vacation. So, you know, depending on what the council decides to do, if they agree to move forward with with the first item and are agreeable, then we'll do the do the second agenda item. If the decision is not to move forward, then the second agenda item would be a, a moot point. All right. Do we have any discussion? And with your materials, obviously, there is a map uh, that describes what it is that's being proposed to be vacated. So it's rather an odd shape. Why not vacate, you know, half, <laughs> half the street? It's like kind of a quarter of the street. Why not vacate a half of the street or the whole street? Why the, why the odd shape? Um, I'd probably defer to Jim and or the applicant on that. My sense is that the city thought it was important to make sure that there were options to the greatest extent possible going forward, um, so to preserve as much as possible. But I'll defer to Jim on that. Yeah, and it's typically not the first thing you want to do is just give up right away. So when they their first their first option was to give up half of the right away. Well, if there was ever anything to happen there, you know, talking with Clay from over at the county, it's, it's just not normal practice to give up all of it. So it's like, what do we need to give up so they can sell our property and move forward? That is zoned commercial. Um, it's zero setbacks. I thought it wouldn't be appropriate to have the property line right at their edge of their foundation, so we went five feet. Five feet out, they can move the property line to there, give up the minimal amount of right-of-way, they can sell their property. This has been like this since 19... I can't remember, 20 or something like that. So this is not, this is nothing new. We're just making something clean in the way it's been. So um, we can, we can give them a path of the right away, but it's just not, it's just not normal just to give up right away. Yeah, okay. Thank you. So Further discussion? So, well, in follow up with that question, or go. Well, I was just, you know, it looks like this is a two-part thing. Um, actually discussing the right-of-way and what we're going to do is the second part. The first part is, do we oppose the filing of the application? Is, David, you used some other words. What? It's consent. Yeah, that's, that's basically... As a property owner, we're consenting, which would allow them to file the application. Um, and so if we can get take care of that first, we'll have step one done, and then we can actually get into the right-of-way um, okay. stuff. Would someone like it's to make a motion? kind of my thought. Well, I'd like well. to make a motion to move to consent 
to the proposed vacation for the right of way abutting 150 East Clackamas Boulevard. I'll second. Any further discussion? Well, back years ago, like I said, as mentioned, this has been like this for like 90 years. Uh, but I think it was like 15, 20 years ago this came before the Planning Commission, and they turned it and, and we turned it down at that time. I don't know if there was any, you know anything brought up or researched in the history about that. Um, well, it's a new I'm application. Well, no, I understand that. And 20 years um, is a long time. Yeah. Well, well no, I, I understand. I'm just giving some background. I just, um, as mentioned, uh, giving up uh, street. <coughs> and, and granted, it's, it's back then, though, Clackamas Boulevard still went, went all, you know, still went through. So that could have played a part. And now it, uh, is mainly in that area a park, you know, uh, T. Fames Park, okay. um, and it's mainly just pedestrian and stuff. Okay. So right. any further discussion? Yes, I, I just want to make sure I understand this. The, the The owner of this property is deceased, right? And and now that it's, it's the estate, the estate is wanting to move forward. So the the property is vacant. I mean, there's nobody living there. Uh, I'm not sure about it. Yeah, it's empty. So it's going to be an empty, empty home until this is taken care of, and they evidently can't sell it until this happens. I think they're having issues as far as getting title uh, coverage for because of the fact that right. part of the house is on the right of way. So, so by approving the vacation, we could be moving the house from vacant status to one where somebody's living there, and it's, it's perhaps being improved. So it seems to me to be a benefit. Any further discussion? Would someone like to? Oh, we got a motion. And sec motion was made by Councillor Pat McMahon, seconded by Councillor Tom Mercero. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The consent is approved. So now we move on to the next one. <coughs> and so for the hearing, um, you know, many of you are familiar uh, with land use procedures and, and the formality that goes in uh, to that. That isn't in play here tonight. So procedurally, I would just suggest that you hear from uh, the the uh, the applicant, the petitioner, um, and get a sense um, from um, their representative as to you know what they're specifically looking for and why. I think a lot of it's been uh, you're correct in many of the assumptions, and then you can hear from interested parties as well. Uh, do I need to read the actual formal land use no. script? All right. You do not. Okay. Would the applicant please come up to the mic and state your name and address, please? <coughs> Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. My name is Rick Givens. I'm a planning consultant. My address is 18680 Sunblaze Drive in Oregon City. Um, I think you have a fairly good handle on what we're about tonight from your discussion, but basically this is a situation where the property, as you mentioned, has had an encroachment into the right-of-way since the house was built and most likely because nobody knew right where the right-of-way was back in those days. Uh, but the owner of the property, uh, deceased, and uh, the estate in trying to get ready to sell the property uh, determined that there was an encroachment into the right-of-way of Clackamas Boulevard. And originally we did propose going approximately to halfway on, on the right-of-way. Uh, because we wanted to get the driveway and things associated with it, with the house, um, you know, as part of the property, uh, staff raised concerns about there may be some future need for the street to go through or some other public use, and uh, so they asked that we revise the proposal to uh, just be the area within roughly five feet of the corners of the building, and that's what we've done. We've modified the plan so that it simply. Uh, is that area within approximately five feet of the corners of the building. Um, and that will allow us then to get clear title to the property and sell it and as Commissioner Johnson mentioned, get it sold and occupied and back being a benefit to the city of Gladstone and not potentially a future eyesore of, as it becomes a vacant mess. So, um, you know, the process in going about all of this is rather odd in Oregon law. We had to go out and get consents, just as we were discussing tonight, from the property owners within the area. And, and 
it's a bizarre process where you're asking people to consent to something before they even have a chance to really hear it at public hearing. But so I was pounding on doors, and probably there'll be some people here tonight that are confused by exactly what they did. But at any rate, we've tried to comply with the law. We've got the right number of signatures. And now with your motion tonight, we clearly meet the two-thirds requirement to proceed. Um, and with that, I'd be glad to answer any questions. And um, otherwise, I'll sit down and shut up. <laughs> Any questions? So do you plan on continuing as a, a residence versus? That's my understanding. Out? Yeah, I did run this a little bit of concern about that because it's a commercially zoned property. People were concerned if we got bigger, you know, maybe somebody would tear the house down and and put a Dairy Queen there was what I heard. <laughs> and that <laughs> absolutely no intention of anything like that. The property is planned to be sold for residential purposes. Obviously, we can't say what a future owner would do, but there isn't much room there for anything to be there anyway. So no parking or anything. Right. We couldn't put parking in there. So that w that would be my understanding as a planner. Yep. All right. Thank well, you very much. Do we have any proponents in the audience that would like to speak on this application? Or that's really not an application. Any opponents? Um, I have one, but I'm not sure if it's a proponent or opposition. Um, I guess technically it would sound like opposition, but it's just a question. Okay. So Libby Wentz. I guess you didn't get to neutral. Sorry, Mayor. My name's Libby Wentz, 545 Collins Crest. Um, I, I'm not really for or against this. It came up on the Planning Commission agenda, but it was then taken off. So it actually was never discussed at planning. Um, and I'm wondering how this would be affected by the new, the new rule we just passed about parklands being given away or sold. That's, you know, didn't we just have something in the last election about parkland can't be given away or no, sold right, or it's street right away would be my it's assumption. just a street yeah. right of way it wouldn't affect the park at all no okay yeah, it's just that right was away. my concern thank you thanks mm -hmm. all right would someone like to make a motion well, I have a staff question sure um, when I was looking at I used the public works as new GIS site and look at this um, and it was really informative it really give me a good idea. Is there still an outbuilding on this property and does that affect the amount of right-of-way that needs to be given? Yes, and as a matter of fact it's five feet off the corner of that as well. Okay. So a corner of the house, corner of the shed or carport or whatever it is, that's where that line's drawn. So it would actually, if that shed was taken out, it would require even less right away at that point. It could, yes. It could bring that line in a little bit. You'd have to imagine it not there and redraw it and see what that would look like, but it would come back a little bit, yes. Okay. It, uh, you know, as mentioned by staff earlier, is you don't ever want to give up right away, um, but by the same token, there's definitely a need here. Um, but if we could, if it could be reduced, um, I'm familiar with that property somewhat. We all drive down Arlington on a regular basis. I'm not sure if there's a lot of value in that outbuilding that's there. Um, and so if we could lower the amount of right-of-way given... Um, by requiring them to tear down a building? By requiring them to remove that outbuilding or move the outbuilding, which probably isn't pros possible, um, I think that might be another option to look at. Yeah, I don't think that that's something that we can require people to start tearing down buildings. Can we require that? Well, you don't have any obligation to give up the right of way. I mean, let's you know be clear about that. It, it's a, a ultimately a, a thing that you do if you think it makes sense. So um, I would say that if there was going to be a difference in terms of what that that uh, uh, vacation would look like. Uh, you know the, that would need to happen at a at a future meeting. Right now, you have an exhibit that's basically a legal description of the yeah. of the piece that's being vacated. So that would that would have to change. But that's certainly something that the council could discuss. I mean, I don't think there's any 
legal issue you couldn't consider. Uh, again, Rick Gibbons speaking. Um, I guess I would ask that you not do that. Mm -hmm. I understand your reluctance to give up right away because you don't know what the future use of it is. But in this instance, even if you ever want to use it for a roadway, there's still adequate room. The, the original right of way was 60 feet wide, which is far wider than you need to put a road through there. Um, and the corner of the house is is here and in order to clear that you know you've got to come pretty much on that tangent anyway so you aren't going to make a significant I mean if you came there and, and went triangular back to there it, you're only saving a smidgen of land and in doing that you're you know causing the estate the expense of tearing down a structure getting a demolition permit the delay of time when this has already gone quite a bit of time so I, I'd ask that you know, and not do that in this instance. I don't think there's anything significant to be gained for the city by doing it, and it would add expense and, and delay to clearing up the estate. Thank you. Okay, would someone like to make a motion? Yes, I'd like to make a motion that we approve Ordinance 1473. It is an ordinance vacating a portion of the right of way for East Clackamas Boulevard located in the city of Gladstone, Oregon. I'll, I'll second that. Motion was made by Councillor Pat McMahon and seconded by Councillor Linda Neese. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Passed. Do you want to do your second reading tonight? So it was unanimous, so you could do a second one tonight. Okay, do you want to do the second? Do you read that's, it out? That's, I can read it out. If yes, that's please. The, okay. So second reading for ordinance number 1473 an ordinance vacating a portion of the right-of-way for East Clackamas Boulevard located in the city of Gladstone, Oregon. Do we have any discussion? Make a motion to approve the second reading of Ordinance 1473. Second that. Motion was made by Councillor Kim Sickman, seconded by Councillor Pat McMahon. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passed. All right. Does anyone need to take a break? Nope. All right. Next item on the agenda is number 10, Resolution 1104, Adoption of the City of Gladstone Sewer Master Plan. Uh, good evening, yeah. Mayor Stemple and Council. How um, so we're here to uh, have you adopt the Gladstone Sanitary Sewer Master Plan. This is the first sanitary sewer master plan that the city has had. Um, so this is kind of a monumental moment here. Um, <laughs> it's a document. And it is, it is a thick document. It is big. Um, give you a little bit of history and background. Um, the city council um, entered into a contract with Murray Smith and Associates back in, um, I believe, August of 2015, and the contract was actually signed in October of 2015 to um, to do a master plan for the city. Um, uh, the system was evaluated. Uh, there was a lot of flow monitoring done, a lot of staff feedback that from staff that knows the system, have been in the pipes, have been in the manholes. Um, and with that, they developed this plan right here. Um, and a lot of industry standards are used to develop this plan. Um, this is a different process than what you're used to seeing, um, basically with the parks and the transportation and downtown revitalization plan that, we go, that is going on. Those are pretty subjective plans. You can change things, it's okay. This here is a real technical, it's, a, it's an eight inch pipe, it's gonna flow this much water, the, it's it's math. I mean, this is really a technical thing, so that that is different. That's why there hasn't been community meetings. That's why there hasn't been a, a lot of this other stuff for the sanitary sewer master plan. And besides that, it's not very warm and fuzzy. <laughs> Nobody wants to. <laughs> but anyways, that's that's why it's a different process. I'm sure that you know you get handed this document a week ahead of time, and you're wondering uh, what are they shoving down my throat. Well, this is a living document, also. This is not something that is you know, this is going to change. Next year, we're going to do some maintenance on the system, and it may change this. I mean, there's just it's just a living document. So I just wanted to kind of reiterate why this is happening a little bit faster than our other plans. Um, 
basically the the probably the biggest thing that you can take out of this plan reading the executive summary it's about I don't know five or six pages and it really kind of goes through the whole thing back in March we came in and did a um, presentation with Marie Smith and Associates and did a PowerPoint that hit all the highlights as well so from that and with your feedback and uh, questions and stuff we did a little bit of tweaking and here's the plan before you um, I'd like to go into a little bit of statistics about our sewer system we have 35 miles of pipe in town and they range from the uh, pipe ranges from 8 inches to 30 inch and we have about a thousand manholes in town and and that's our system I mean, we have some pump stations but those are uh, managed and operated by uh, water environment services the county um, probably our number one priority that this plan is showing is that our issue is is I and I that is infiltration and inflow water coming in between joints getting in cracked pipe um, storm catch basins draining into the system that's going to be our main focus for many many years um, by the time we get all that done quite honestly I think we're going to be ready for an update and I, I honestly believe that we're going to be able to we're going to probably find that maybe some of the deficiencies go away and we can downsize this thing so that's really what this is about is getting out there and stop the sewer overflows to the river as a matter of fact DEQ um, you guys were all forwarded an email string that I received from DEQ they've been getting complaints you guys have seen we got signs down at the river eight times as a matter of fact over this last winter um, this is happening a lot and it's got their attention it's got some people's attention um, this this is a plan to guide us on where the worst areas are get the lowest hanging fruit and let's go deal with those um, uh, here during the budget committee we talked about stormwater stormwater is actually a big piece of this we we're introducing a stormwater um, fund so we can go out and get some of the stormwater off the sanitary sewer when you got a catch basin in the middle of the street taking on all the water and dumping it right into your sewer it, our sewer system can't keep up so that's that's something that's happening also the storm system is going to start taking care of the storm system getting that water out of there um, some of the next steps if we adopt this or when we adopt this is we're going to do a financial report and what that's going to do is it's going to set our SDC rates so we can update those and start collecting appropriate SDC rates it's also going to it's also going to look at what do we need on our rates to fund fixing these pipes and getting rid of this I and I and this is doing sewer linings and doing repairs like I said those are going to be the things we're going to focus on first um, you'll see some big projects in there millions and millions of dollars um, again we're going to work on I and I first that's where we're going to focus our energy because some of those issues may go away they may be they may get a little bit smaller we don't know but I and I is probably our biggest issue to deal with um, with that um, Murray Smith and Associates is here Mike and Shad if there's any technical questions about the plan that I can't answer um, and I would be happy to answer any questions but if I might I just just to add to what Jim has said um, about the financial aspects of this coming later this is not something that we're, we're approving tonight or considering tonight um, I also want to mention that this is a major point in our strategic plan and we have been including uh, relevant strategic plan objectives and goals in in each of the agenda items that you see tonight but completing the sewer master plan objective 616b has been something that we've had uh, for quite some time um, I think this when did you say it started probably a year and a half ago at least and, and we're finally to a point where we can adopt a plan is, is uh, right and like I say staff has been involved in every one of these sections we'd get a section it would get shipped over to us myself our sanitary sewer supervisor and also our other supervisor both been here a very long time we would review that and we'd go to the next section so over the course of this year and a half we have been through every one of these sections made corrections sent them back so um, staff is very feels very comfortable with this plan so a couple of questions um, you, you said eight inches the smallest pipeline I, right. I find a six in here maybe it's a typo it's by the Barton uh, interceptor towards the top of it is that is that a six or an eight there probably is some out there I was pulling this out of out of I may have made a mistake okay. on that so all right. was in the summary it was eight to 30 okay okay right all right well and it gets a little confusing because there's confusion between private 
and and uh, city owned pipes and it, the private can get down to three or four inch okay. you know for example but as far as the city's main pipe and our standards today is minimum of eight okay. you know so six will give you some trouble a, a larger question um, there there is pipeline here from Oak Lodge and it's used as a uh, distribution up to uh, the short forest area it runs down Jennings Avenue what is our responsibility for that pipeline once it leaves the city of Gladstone? Do we have any? Actually, there's a lot of, of Oak Lodge system in within the city limits that we don't maintain. Oh, really? So there, and one of the other things that this master plan has identified is we need to revisit our IGAs with our neighboring, you know, Oak Lodge, Clackamas County Service District one. We need to revisit those because they. They just, if I had any hair, I'd pull it out. But <laughs> it, they're, they're confusing. So there, there are some lines that it's their system and we maintain. There's some lines that's just theirs. They do everything and the billing is weird. There's just, there's some issues there. And it's recognized and it needs okay. to be worked on. And the last one I think I have is, uh, um, I, s I think I saw in a couple of places that it looks like $28 million is, is the price to do these fixes. Granted, we could find out otherwise, but is that a fair number, about $28 million? And that's a 20-year plan. And a 20-year plan, Over right. 20 years, that's what we're assuming we're going to do. And like I said, we spend five years dealing with I&I. &I, we are probably going to want to not, not make a new plan, but definitely update it. And it talks about that as well, reevaluate. Fix some I and I and reevaluate. Do some flow monitorings. Are we overflowing to the river? Right. I mean, that's a number one indicator, right? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I think you've been very consistent on the I and I is what we need to fix first, and that may because sewer is it's no pressure, essentially it's pipe right. and it just kind of flows, so you can get a lot longer than uh, life out of it than water because right. water's pressurized, right. and if you can keep the water getting into the sewer, you can alleviate a lot of the problems. Correct. And some of the repairs we can do, we can line the pipe without digging up the street and then get rid of some of that. And you think about it, we're treating stormwater. So having conversations with Wes, if we start, they're, they're willing to partner with us and help us because that's going to affect how much capacity they need at the plant if we're not treating all of our stormwater or groundwater. So it is, it's, it's very important to work on that I&I. &I. It is definitely low-hanging fruit, as I like to call it. As Eric mentioned, this we're not approving the <coughs> amount of money. So what Eric's talking about is w once we adopt this, mm -hmm. that gives the financial report numbers to work off from. Right. So so we're approving the plan. The financials are next. Right. And I just want to keep everybody in focus, keep myself in focus. This is only one part of the overall. Okay. There is the water, there is the storm water, which is part of this, but it's part of the water plan originally. Uh, we've got the sewer now, okay? We've also got the conduit, but cable in or whatever, okay? And we've also got paving. And the discussion over the last few years has been if we do things, we ought to do them all at the same time, okay? Uh, so I like to keep that. I originally had the thing estimated at about 113 million. I think was the number. Uh, do you do you have a summation of what the numbers are now? No, because we're not done with our TSP. We're, we still have the Parks Master Plan to go. You know, so right now we, what we have currently is the stormwater and the water master plans. They were adopted back in 2014. So we have those two. Now once we have this, we'll work on the financials on that and we're going to wrap the water one in there as well because that hasn't been looked at, you know, the actual financial piece. Um, so now we have the sanitary or the transportation system plan with that's, a, that's going to have a price tag to it to do the repairs and fix the streets. We also did um, the pavement management system, which is what you might be talking about. And that's an ongoing maintenance that'll last forever. What it does is it evaluates your streets and it determines where's the best bang for the buck on maintaining your streets. For example, if you have a street that's alligator but it's solid, you want to go out there and crack seal that street and get another 10 to 15 years out of it versus just let it go and it'll last another five years and then you got to tear the road out and dig out the base. So this that that talks more about ongoing maintenance. Um, so 
that we're we're able to get a good handle on with that right away fee that's going out and then you guys dedicated that towards the street fund to deal with that so going into this next budget with the proposed budget we'll be addressing some of those issues in the street so as far as having a total sorry to get all long-winded off course but as far as having a total I don't have that yet <laughs> no big it is going to be a big number but <laughs> a big number yeah. and that's the biggest thing I wanted to make it right. sure everybody understands we're not talking about a twenty thousand dollar job or a hundred thousand dollar job we're talking about a hundred million dollars plus right okay. it, and as I talked during the budget um, budget committee meeting, what we're looking to do from staff levels, we're looking to phase into that, you know, kind of take and you know what what can the citizens bear? You know, obviously they're not gonna they're not gonna be able to bear a 500 percent rate increase on their water bill or something like that. So we're looking at phasing, and this thing didn't get broke overnight. So the way staffs look at this, let's just start inching forward and and start taking care of this stuff. Um, get these master plans under our belt and just start inching forward. We're going to be doing better. We're going to be getting making this system better. Definitely take care of all the low-hanging fruit. Okay. Yeah. Now, I would like to see Gladstone streets improved immensely, okay, which this plan alone, okay, you've got it over 20 years. At least that's the way the engineering's got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I would really like to see it be reduced so maybe I can see it in my lifetime. Okay. Uh, 20 years out is a little bit tough. <laughs> uh, I would like to, personally, <coughs> I'd like to see us be looking at it, a goal of doing it in five years. Okay. And when you think about what I've said of a hundred million dollars, okay, going over time, it's just going to cost more, okay. If I, I did some rough numbers on this, okay, but if we have three percent inflation on this project alone, right, okay, it costs uh, seven million. Uh, we'll leave it at that seven million dollars more. Right. by going 20 years just due to the inflation right okay so if you take that over a hundred million dollars okay we're talking about four or five times that amount okay so I would like to keep that in everybody's mind that we try to push this to a shorter gap right in some ways that that can happen is bonding right you know you can bond up to 20 years so you 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 know and you want to be selective on what projects you do that with but you can bond and get those done and then you pay for it over the next right. 20 years without having to do you know a huge pay as you go that would be an astronomical increase in something to pay right. for that for clarification so. we're not talking the financial piece we're talking right. about right. the sanitary sewer master yes. plan so yes. can we try and Stay focused a little bit. Right. Any more questions on the sanitary sewer master plan? Well, not so much a, a question, but as mentioned, it, you know, uh, they were here a couple of months ago, gave us an overview. Um, we got this back on Thursday, and I mean, I don't know about the rest of you, but I really didn't get a chance to really dig through it o over the weekend. And I know the, the resolution has today's date, but I like to wait and uh, uh, redress this or approve it next month to give at least you know myself I'm going to speak for you guys a chance to really go through it because I, I, I can't I can't approve something I really didn't get a chance to to dig into I mean we had you know had had this of you know inch and a half thick and the the contract which was a hundred something pages for Comcast to go through so well on the sewer master plan I don't think any of us are engineers, and I'm certainly hoping that the people we hired know what they're doing and that staff has gone through this really closely. So I don't know if another month would open our eyes more. How do you guys feel? I think that's what we pay Jim and everybody else for is to do these kinds of things for us and bring it to us. Yeah, I agree. I can. I read the executive summary, and I looked at all the pretty pictures on the rest of it so far. And <laughs> that's that was about all I did, too. That's about all we That was only because I got in yesterday late, so, but... Um, no, I'm pretty comfortable with with having staff recommend things to us that we 
it's just poop to me, so. It's not in our expertise. <laughs> if you think this is good, then I'm ready to roll. <laughs> well said. I, I, okay. I agree with you, waste Pat. Water. <laughs> waste water. Yeah. Clean it up a little bit, Pat. I think the executive yeah. summary was very thorough yeah. and uh, easy to read. It was well written. Even even a bunch of city councilors can read it and understand <laughs> it. So I, I think that that and the maps, I think, were uh, very, very thorough. Okay, I think Kim sure. is waiting. He's been <laughs> I just want to make sure you said this was a living document, but by the same token, this is what we have to do. Yes. Um, I just want to make sure that we've got the opportunity as all of these master plans come together that we've got enough latitude in here with our CIPs that we will actually have maybe a master CIP list that would encompass sewer, stormwater, water, um, pavement, and all of those things where we've pulled all of these together, where we're being the most effective we can yes. every time we dig a hole. Yes, and what we will do with that is you take the worst of the worst, well, excuse me, of all your plans. For example, Clarendon Street, I had that conversation, you know, we went after a grant for that because it's the streets are horrible, the sewer is horrible, there's no storm. Um, the water line, there's dual water lines down there. Why do we have that? You know, so we're look, we are looking at that. Even before the plans are adopted, we're doing that now because we know, we know what these things need to be. We, see, these guys have been working here 20 plus years. They know where the issues are. And so we're already doing that. And when you say you have to, it's you should. These master plans, you should. It's a you should. It's not a you have to. That's why they're kind of a, they're a plan. Things change. And so as things change, we'll, we'll make adjustments to that. So, but you have to have a plan. You have to have a direction. Right. That's the only way yes. you can get funding. Exactly. For these so I think plan. sometimes these are taken a little bit beyond what they really are. I mean, like, oh my gosh, you know, you get right Bible. down. Yeah. Yeah. You know, even when there's a plan, it, it, there's a project in here, we're going to, we're going to go over that project with a fine tooth comb with, we fine tooth comb, sorry, I'm getting a little cotton mouth, fine tooth comb. When we do that project, say even in five years, we're going to go, is that still relevant? We're going to reevaluate. We're not going to do exactly what it says. We're going to reevaluate. This is a 10,000 foot plan. So. Okay. Do we have any other questions for staff? I just want to make it clear the way I feel. I've got no problem with the master plan. I think it was very well put together. There's a lot of data in there. Okay. Uh, but it does indicate and suggest it'll take at least 20 years to do it. Mm -hmm. I will not approve the plan if it stays that in mind, that it's going to take 20 years. If we say something that we're going to try to reduce the time or whatever, okay, I got no problem with that. I just don't like to live with the thought it's going to take for 20 years right. and nobody's going to back up. Right. Can I add to that just a little bit? I'm sorry, but so almost almost all master plans are 20 years, maybe 30. Some push out 30. In five to 10 years, you're going to make a new 20-year master plan. So it's almost like you're always doing Bowling. a 20-year look ahead. So in 10 years, we're going to do another plan, most likely, and it's going to update it, and it's going to change a little bit. 50 years from now, we're going to have a 20-year master plan. But <laughs> you the know. costs are broken out in yeah. time periods. Right. Period. Right. But that's what's all Period redone. For 10 years, right. for 15 years, and 20 years. Right? Yes. It's right. not quite like that. Right. Okay. Yes. So they are suggesting that it's going to take 20 years to do this. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. And like, okay. Yeah. Oh, we're sorry. We're, the finance piece is getting all muddled in with okay. the master plan. Would somebody like to make a motion? Yes, I'd like to make a motion to approve the 2017 City of Gladstone Sanitary Sewer Master Plan Resolution Number 1104. Second. Any further discussion? This is oh, excuse me. Motion was made by Councillor Pat McMahon and seconded by Councillor Steve Johnson. Any further discussion? This is an exciting milestone in the city of Gladstone. I'm really excited to see this moving forward. This is this is uh, this makes us look like a real city. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> really appreciate it. Well, thank you guys for putting that together before I got here. <laughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Passed. Thank you.
Anybody need to take a break? Nope. All right. Next item on our agenda is number 11, ordinance, ordinance 1472, granting a non-exclusive cable franchise to Comcast of Oregon, Inc. And I believe the representatives are here. Correct. Uh, we have Lance Paulson, who's been working with us on our right-of-way uh, issues, and uh, this is the cable franchise is slightly different than that, but uh, he's been assisting us working with uh, Com Comcast. Uh, we also have Tim Goodman, who is a representative from Comcast. Um, he actually is the Government Affairs Director for Oregon and Southwest Washington Comcast Cable. Um, I'm going to let Jackie kind of go through the history background and proposal. I, I uh, want to point out, since we're talking milestones tonight, this has been a cable franchise that has expired since 2009. So. Um, to, to be in a position here finally in 2017 to actually consider moving forward with adopting this is a major, major milestone. So, Jack, if you yes, want. Yes, thank you, Mr. Swanson. Uh, Mayor Council, and that's a very good point. I think when I was going through the file, I found one little extension that took us through January 2010. So really what you're approving is a new franchise agreement, but I want to be clear that Cam Comcast has paid their franchise fees and they've been paying the 5%. And in fact, this year we received an audit stating that they have been true and good to their revenue projections when they came in. Um, the gross receipts were 3291000 So we are current with payments and audits. We've had a good relationship. We just need to get it on paper. Before I hand it over to Lance, I just also wanted to say that we've had legal review this um, franchise agreement and we don't have to go out for any sort of process because basically anyone that wants to have a franchise with the city is allowed to do that and we'll talk a little bit about that we don't foresee that happening but that's why it's a non-exclusive franchise agreement it does not fall underneath the city's new right-of-way agreement because it is cable and other than that, there's just been a lot of um, language, and I think Lance wants to hit on the PEG channel for future use if the city wants to use it. And other than that, Lance, Tim. Oh, good evening, Mayor and Councilors. This contract, like they have updated you, is basically an update from 2009 in regards to the construction standards. They're, they're now going to be current regarding permitting and the work that they do in the right-of-way as far as restoring the right-of-way. And then there was a, I would call it an innovative piece that we worked together with Comcast and that was regarding the PEG channel and the future for the PEG channel. PEG stands for uh, Public Education and Government Channel. So if, as a city, you choose at any time to broadcast your council meetings, planning commission meetings, any other public functions that you have on Comcast, you can do that uh, with 120 days notice to Comcast. At that point, Comcast would then charge a fee that we would negotiate. Uh, the going rate now is about 80 cents per subscriber per month and those funds would be set aside to be used as capital expenditures. For example, you could use them on a new camera system for the commission chambers. You could use it uh, for anything that related to like non-labor to get that um, content out to your residents. So it was something uh, unusual and uh, I, I thought a great, great compromise uh, and so that's what you have before you, and uh, I think we're open to any questions that you might have. So along the lines of the PEG channel, I understood that we needed to be part of Willamette Falls right. media or whatever it was in order to use that. Is that not true? Am I using the right terminology? Because we used to be part of it, uh, that, that media center or whatever it is, and prior to this council, uh, the council uh, dropped out of that and stopped paying into it. 
Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. Again, my name is Tim Goodman, Director of Government Affairs with, with Comcast. Uh, my office is in, is in Beaverton, but I handle all the franchises in Oregon, Southwest Washington. Um, in regards to that, um, so an entity such as the city would have the option of programming that themselves, or if they wanted to contract with somebody like Willamette Falls as a designated access provider, you could do that. So you have an option to do either or. Thank you. Any further questions? So, so Oregon City is doing what this PEG program? Yes, Oregon or? City does have a PEG program, and we do contract with Willamette Falls Media Center. Westland used to belong to that, and then they dropped out. Right. Just like Gladstone yeah. did. Yeah. Uh -huh. I you. would just comment, um, those are usually good consortiums to be involved with because they typically involve, you know, community college uh, students and other kinds of resources to provide opportunities for, for those folks that want to get into this, this industry. And um, I found that they've done a very quality, quality level of content which can, can uh, be very effective with public education or even just events being able to have a, events be filmed and then rebroadcast or broadcast live on 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 our on our cable site so and I think in our discussions with where the opportunity is for the peg channels will be when we start designing the new city hall and incorporating the new equipment that would allow us to do that so there is where the opportunity and the notice would have to come in any additional questions the staff recommends that we go with this. Uh, does anybody see anything wrong with it? No, I don't. Would someone like to make a motion? I'd be happy to make a motion. I make a motion to approve ordinance number 1472, an ordinance granting a non-exclusive cable franchise to Comcast of Oregon II, Incorporated. I'll second that. Motion was made by Councillor Steve Johnson. Did, did Hold on. I apologize. I just yeah, no, I was just okay. going to ask it. Seconded right. by Councillor Pat McMahon, and I've been, oops, I forgot to get public testimony. So, Jackie, do we have someone that would like to speak? <coughs> yes, Mindy Garlington. Mindy Garlington, 7000 Debbie Court, and I'm going to ask because Mr. Reisner brought up the fact that he may have read part of this 150-page document, which I didn't have time to do. So I'm wondering if anywhere in there it talks about what they get, what Comcast gets to do on a person's property, what notification they have to give you for cutting roots on your trees that now you're responsible to, cut, to take care of, and the fact that when they do this, they don't have to contact you and tell you that they're going to come on your property and do such work. So is any of that in the little 150-page document that maybe they could have the common courtesy to call somebody back and tell them that they've done that? Well, they happen to be here, so we can ask you that can question. Ask and for clarity, it's a 51-page document. It's oh. in there twice because one has the red line version. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody's read that 51 page document, does it talk about it all? How they get to treat our property? It says the permission of, there is a section 10.4, permission of property owner is required. Really? Yes. That's good to know because they didn't call me and ask me. Do you have some business cards you want to hand yeah, out? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, so it is in there. And they told yeah. me that it wasn't there, it was, they were contracted. So the folks that they contracted to who came onto my property and did the work, they didn't call me back either. Well, it so is in there. It is in the agreement. It's good to know it's in there because, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Mindy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have a motion and a seconded. Anybody else wants to speak on this one? Nope, we're good. Any further discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Second reading. Oh, we need to have a second reading. Can reread it now. Oh, second reading. All right. Do you want to do the second reading? I'll do the uh, second reading. Sure. sure. Okay. Uh, ordin <coughs> ordinance number uh, 1472, an ordinance granting a non-exclusive cable franchise to Comcast of Oregon II Incorporated. Oh, good. Motion to accept the second reading of ordinance 1472. I'll second it, Lynn Denise. 
Any further discussion? Oh, motion was made by Councillor Kim Sickman, seconded by Councillor Linda Neese. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Anybody need to take any breaks? Got to keep asking that just in case. Um, next item on the agenda is authorization to solicit bids for an exclusive towing services contract for the police department. Okay, so the chief is uh, is here to go over um, this option. I, I want to just point out again our strategic plan or relevancy to the strategic plan and it's continually improving quality customer service which is our mission statement. And I think what we found in this situation is that this is when uh, a lot of our citizens and people that pass through um, Gladstone and have unfortunate accidents or reasons to call a towing company, they're probably the most vulnerable because um, it can happen at different times of the night. And what we found is the current system uh, really does not provide us that fast, efficient service that we, we would like to see. And by moving to a uh, a contract that we can provide some additional requirements so that those most vulnerable population that are you know in, find themselves in unfortunate <laughs> situations can uh, can get fairly treated and and then have some better standards uh, in terms of requirements for a response and those kinds of things so with that I know chief has more stories to talk about in terms of how this is working now or not working now and how it could work in the Stories? future. Yeah. I can tell. Yeah, <laughs> I can. Chief Jolly with the uh, Gladstone Police Department. Uh, this this came up as a result of, on a weekly basis, more or less, we're dealing with uh, tow companies that take 45 minutes to an hour to respond. That takes an officer out of service because if there's a hazard in the road, once we come upon it, we can't leave it. We would be liable for that. Uh, we're finding that uh, tow companies are often selective depending on the type of car or accident, uh, how disabling the accident is or the type of vehicle, and they often don't have the correct equipment to tow a vehicle. And that increases and causes these delays. Um, taking over enforcement of Highway 99 as, as we plan to do here in the future will only accelerate this problem and cause us more concerns and more officer time out of service. So we're seeking to go with a single tow company that can meet the criteria that's spelled out in the contract that's attached to um, your in your packet and that specifically gives us some enforceable action against a single tow provider that if they're not meeting the uh, duties of the tow contract that w we could subject them to not towing for us. Currently we go through a tow desk and we're randomly assigned tow companies and, and this ensures that the single source provider that we're using has all of the equipment necessary to deal with any accident or situation that we might encounter in our city. So. The bottom line is we're, we're looking for somebody who has the right equipment, sends the right equipment to the scene, and does so in a timely manner, frees our officers up. So. How many tow companies are you going to talk to? We're going to send this out to all the tow companies currently at the, that go through the tow desk as well as everybody in the Portland metropolitan area that's within a, the response time. Okay. okay, that's what I was going to ask: is how are you? Where are you going to advertise this? But yeah, we're going to direct. We're going to direct. Way. Okay. How would this program, taking this on ourselves through contract, be different than using tow, uh, the tow desk? Is that any difference financially for the city? No, there's no cost to this. There's no monies exchanged for this. This is just an agreement. Okay. So the money they get is when they tow somebody. That's correct. And, that it, and it doesn't preclude anybody who has a preference for their own tow to call their own tow company. Okay. This is for police-directed tows only. Oh, okay. So it's not like they're going to sit around in the city here and, and look for <laughs> violations or something and go after <laughs> somebody. Complex. No, nothing like that. Okay. All right. Any further questions? Discussion? Um, I, like make a motion. Yep, I make a motion to approve the request to seek bids to provide emergency tow services for the City of Gladstone per this proposal. I second. 
Motion was made by Councillor Neil Reisner and seconded by Councillor Tom Mercero. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed. All right, the last item on our agenda is approval of new OLCC liquor license application for Hollywood Beverage LLC located at 435 West Arlington. Staff? Uh, well, you may have seen this gentleman before. Dan Miner was here uh, in August. Well, it's been maybe long in March of 2000. It's been a few months ago. And uh, he was giving us a kind of a rundown on what his proposal was and you know how he could address some of the concerns that we had and um, council didn't have any any uh, any objection for for at that point um, as you can probably note there's construction going on for the, the liquor store so he's getting ready to finish the the project and move forward with the uh, proposed liquor license um, for Hollywood, Hollywood bread beverage, excuse me, um, over near the McLaughlin uh, Arlington intersection. So didn't didn't we do this before, or did I not understand? I thought we had approved this. I think it was more informational right. before, and um, Mr. Miner came and spoke to the council and told of his plans, and uh, some citizens had some input and expressed some concerns, and you had a chance to weigh in on those. What we're looking for tonight is, um, you know, basically the state has approved this liquor license. It's been vetted through us. And although we come to no conclusion as to recommended staff action, there's there's nothing that would preclude us from um, saying that he's fit to be in business and be a, it would be a good business partner for uh, Gladstone. Um, it's only ordinance 1467 that says this will come before you for new licenses and change of ownership, which were the two that we've dealt with tonight is why we're here. But there's nothing to preclude um, anything that would obstruct our recommendation for Mr. Miner and his business Hollywood Beverage to be granted this. So for clarity, when we met uh, July 20th of 2016, that was just discussion. Yes, we that, that was informational. And my uh, redlined staff report that I did right. um, didn't, clearly distinguish between the project going forward versus the discussion. So that was my yeah, chief, chief, chief and I discussed that. Yeah. Right okay. Yeah. Uh, good evening, Dan Miner. I'm the uh, appointed agent. There we go. Uh, Dan Miner. I'm the appointed agent uh, for the new liquor store on 435 West Arlington. Uh, the previous meeting was consideration for my appointment as a liquor agent. The license application that I've made is for the off-premise license that was specific to beer and wine. So I've already been appointed on the liquor side. This is a relatively new uh, way that liquor stores can operate and be what's called non-exclusive. Previously, liquor stores had to be exclusive, meaning that you could not obtain a, uh, an off-premise license for beer and wine. But the, the council, this council, did not approve that. I mean, that was the OLCC approved all of that. This was simply discussion and public input. Right. Correct. That, I, I believe that's what it was. Actually, yeah. when I appeared, I had already been appointed as that new right. agent right. by the, the and, commission. And for the record, I did express opposition and will again tonight. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion, <coughs> questions? No, I'm just glad you clarified that because I, I, I was confused because I... Okay. So. Would someone like to make a motion then? I, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the liquor license for Hollywood Beverage. I'll, I'll second it. <laughs> the tie vote. Um, motion was made by Councillor Pat McMahon, seconded by Councillor Linda Neese. Any further discussion? So again, I do not believe that Gladstone needs a liquor store. There was discussion last time about this item, and one of the things that was said, I'm not sure if it was you, Mr. Miner, or, or other people, was that uh, market share would be taken from surrounding liquor stores and I, I'd have trouble with that that you know if you're going to build a new store of any kind you're going to want to build market share market share means more sales close by and that could uh, become more social problems more problems for our police department so I, I met you if you're a nice guy I'm still <laughs> gonna vote no on this tonight I so, understand yeah, sir. Right. Jackie could you take a roll call vote please certainly madam mayor Councillor Mercero? Yes. 
Councillor Reisner? Yes. Councillor McMahon? Yes. Councillor Johnson? No. Councillor Neese? Yes. Councillor Sickman? Yes. Mayor Stimple? Yes. Passed. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Gladstone. Yes. Um, next we'll item is business on, yeah. carried <laughs> forward. Do we have any business carried forward? No. Oh, we're All right. Um, and business from the council, we moved the library board up. So we'll start with Councilor Mercero. Uh, okay. Uh, number one, I would like to uh, thank the uh, police department. Uh, last meeting, we didn't have a police representative here mm -hmm. that I could thank for the flowers that were sent. They sent a super nice looking flower. Uh, thanks to everybody for the cards and flowers. And uh, we did have a celebration of life at High Rocks. There was, uh, I believe, at or over 200 people that came. Uh, so uh, it was well taken and a lot of good input. So thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. Um, Councillor McMahon. Uh, Mother's Day brunch is Thursday at the Senior Center, May 11th at 1130. So they always love to see council or anybody that wants to come by. It's $3 now. And the soup and salad bar is now open and you should have seen the line. I got there after delivering meals today and there was all 30, well it was probably 30, but there was probably 20 uh, congregants and they said the salad bar was open and all 20 of them got up to go get a fresh salad to go along with their with their meal so it was pretty exciting to watch that so stay out of the way Mr. <laughs> 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 Reisner so, thank you well, as mentioned earlier um, the uh, library board met last week and discussed about the uh, uh, library uh, situation the lawsuit and and also uh, the uh, we had uh, Paul Savas was there also uh, but again, because of uh, the lawsuit, there, there was a, uh, a lot that wasn't uh, able to be said. And uh, so they uh, still would like us to continue talking and, uh, and, and go forth. Um, Monday, I um, met with the parks, uh, or the par parks board met, and um, several different things were discussed, but mainly what came out was that there's a... Uh, a proposed uh, apartment complex, I believe, or apartment building uh, being talked about for north north end of Beatrice near Abernathy, which is, uh, if it goes in, would be right next to the uh, wetlands. Olson wetlands. Right, Olson wetlands. Thank you. And so they're concerned uh, uh, about about that and uh, uh, proposing a, a letter to uh, the planning commission. Uh, Relating their, you know, regarding their concerns. Mm -hmm. Then also back uh, a week and a half or so ago on the Saturday the 29th, the um, Friends of uh, the Nature Park put together an awesome uh, second day, their second annual Arbor Day celebration. Um, got two two pages of uh, supporters, but uh, what I was just going to to list out was uh, different booths that were there. The um, Gladstone Historical Society. Uh, the children's course was there uh, regarding some uh, golf, um, the Library Foundation, uh, Trout Unlimited, uh, Shock Foundation, uh, the North Clackamas Urban Watersheds Council was giving out uh, ways to uh, conserve water, uh, the Clackamas County Watershed, also uh, the Boy Scouts, uh, the two uh, scout, um, Eagle Scouts that uh, were in the paper recently where they had spent a lot of time coordinating cleaning up a lot of the trails, uh, gave uh, Mayor Stimple and I a, a tour of what they did, which was really uh, um, expansive. I was just was, was shocked. It, it, it Granted, it, I hadn't been up there uh, since last fall, and it really looks nice. Um, uh, let's see, Water Environment Services was there talking about, um, speaking of uh, water pipes, sewer pipes, and uh, the sewage plant, uh, Mr. Geist was there, and um, the chiropractic, I'm not sure how to pronounce Slinker. it. Slinker. was uh, working on people's 
Thank you. Yeah. And uh, leave the, the best for last. Uh, John Eichstead and his sister was providing awesome music. I was just showed up to curious about the music part of it, how they were able to, to pull that off. But it was, it was some great uh, 60s, 70s stuff. So look forward to, uh, to next year. And uh, I'm hoping that maybe somehow we can, can coordinate it with uh, the great stuff that was happening down here, which I'm going to leave to, I'm sure, somebody else to talk about. And for those parks right. people, I did have a tour, and Poison Oak may be a native, but we can still get rid of it. Please. <laughs> I'm told we can't because it's a native. <laughs> Councillor Sickman. Uh, I'll let you talk about our meeting with First T. Yeah, if you okay. Think that's fine. Um, but, Chief, are you still here? Could I get you to come back up and do my job for me, please? I would like to talk about the drug take back. And I know you've got numbers, probably. I do not. Um, okay. Uh, uh, on on April 29th, we had our annual Gladstone Police Department drug take back. Um, that started several years ago. I'm not sure when, what year we actually started it again, because it was happening then. It didn't happen um, and I was there and I'm still amazed by the amount of drugs that are turned in these are prescription pills they're not taking any sharps they're not taking any liquids I believe it was two was it 209 pounds of prescription pills that were turned in um, it's just nuts uh, along with that event um, the rotary manned a trailer across the street to collect uh, personal sensitive documents for people to be shredded. Um, the trailer was fairly full. I don't know if they've done it yet and how many pounds or anything was there, but there was a bunch of stuff that people turned in there. Uh, the Gladstone Cracksburger Robotics Club was around the corner. Gearheads. They were collecting uh, electronic recyclables. I think I heard they took five truckloads or trailer loads out. That's how much stuff they got. They'd wow. fill a trailer up and take it, go unload it, and come back and get more. Oh um, it was a huge success. Um, I know that next year, if they can work it out, they'd like to get a large dumpster for personal belongings, couches, mattresses, that kind of stuff that people really can't get rid of. Um, and hopefully we'll get that together for next year. But it was a fantastic day. Great. Chancellor Neese? Nice. Um, I want to kind of tag on to what Pat said about the Senior Center. And I'm going to <coughs> challenge you all on the council to go to at least one this next month and help and if you can go on the 11th please do it because it's fun and they really enjoy seeing us there and I have had more comments from those that there at the senior center it says they are glad to see the council taking notice so I'm going to challenge you to go and help serve and have a good time um, I will be going to Salem this week for the tourism conference and I'll report to you next month about that. And again, I want to encourage all of you to please attend our first event of Lattice Motors the first Thursday in June and it's from 7 to 9. Setup will be at 6, but it will be a, a great time and and you all will enjoy it. And they have some great prizes and fun things that they give away. So you get um, a ticket and uh, they've and they're real good on their prices so make sure that you get a ticket when you arrive so I look forward to seeing you all there Councillor Johnson uh, I was also at the uh, drug take back uh, Kim was doing all the work I think I was just eating the police department's pizza but uh, it was it was a good event <laughs> thanks yeah <laughs> and uh, good pizza um, one of the things I learned is that a lot of those drugs, uh, well not a lot, but some, some of those drugs are coming from uh, uh, people whose uh, family members have passed. Uh, the drugs are still laying around and it's a good way of disposing of them. 
Uh, I was also able to uh, make a, a, a donation of equipment uh, to the uh, Kraxberger uh, folks. Uh, they do take commercial gear. It uh, doesn't seem to matter to them. We had a nice conversation about the, what they would and wouldn't take. Um, uh, I will, I will look forward to making some more deposits there. That that worked out well, and the uh, celebration of life of, for Barb was a very nice event. Uh, it was standing room only. There was no place to park in the parking lot. I've never seen the place that busy before. That really says a lot about Barb and Tom. And thank you all for coming. Have a nice night. And I'm last. So on the 28th, Councilor Sickman and I met with Kathy over at the Children's Course to talk about some programs that they're offering, um, in particular something called the First Tee, where they're, it's not just golf after school, it's really, you can chime in on this one too, it is just a really comprehensive program that teaches children core values. And I don't remember what all of the core values were, but they were citizenship and it's it's kind of the game of golf where it's you know you play against yourself and it's a it's a competition and it's it has rules about who goes first and how you mark your ball it's all about um, those kind of values of fair play and, and right and having fun. Is there an so. age group? No, I'm going to sign up for it. I'm going to go start taking <laughs> golf lessons. I'm going to be involved in it. It's I had no idea that they do more than just play golf down there. It yeah. is a great program. I think they also at one point in time were picking up from school to take. They do. And they also, the, the clubhouse there, they get a lot of contributions from Nike. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for some knock, knock, kind of Nike knockoff stuff, you can get it and what you pay for it is a contribution to to the first tee. So. Well, they're, they're looking at building a new clubhouse, which is beautiful, and they're trying to find creative ways to fund it. I believe it's just shy of $2 million. Right. So that, that's what their big goal is right now. But I would encourage anyone to go down there and play golf. The people are wonderful. They've got great programs. So I'm going to be out there golfing. Uh, talk to Jackie. She's quite the... You go down there? there? Yes, that, that's lessons. where I've been going since uh -huh. I moved here. Yeah, yeah the, uh, the clubhouse that they're talking about is going to be a lot of classrooms, which for golf, classrooms may have a little different definition than what we would think of. But it's to give them an opportunity to be there and meet more during the winter months as well. Um, the other part of it that they... Uh, talked about was they really wanted to let the community know that it's called the children's course and they do the first T program which is predominantly a children event type or training or education but the golf course is meant for everybody um, people can go down there and take their lunch hour and run around and shoot nine holes if they play really fast or you, like me you get there at nine and you hope you're done by dark <laughs> um, but they they really want to encourage everybody to come and use it. The other thing is is they're starting to work on programs for veterans. Um, so I've been in contact with a couple of people, um, the VFW in Oregon City. I've talked to those people. I've also talked to the people at Parrot Creek. Um, they used to partner with Parrot Creek and the first tee um, for some youth stuff um, and it looks like they're starting to talk and going to get that partnership maybe put back together. Uh, so it's another community business that's doing good things that I'm hoping the city can partner with and help them be successful with all of these other things they're doing. Yeah, they actually have tutors for kids, too, so it's not just golf. It's also schoolwork. They have a, a, a ribbon-cutting ceremony on the 12th at noon, and then there's also a Swing for Safety golf tournament fundraiser on the 16th for the um, fire and police department. So definitely get on down there and, and check out the course. Uh, Saturday the 6th, we had our first and hopefully one of many repair fairs at the Senior Center, which was inspired by Clackamas County. We brought in a whole bunch of people that fix things, appliances, jewelry, seamstresses, bike gallery showed up, and then people would bring in things that needed to be fixed. And the people there were actually teaching 
how to fix things instead of just doing it themselves. So it was, I felt a great turnout. The robotics club, the gearheads hosted it, and the, it just, it was great. All the kids were there helping. It, I think he had almost two dozen people show up with bike issues. So, and I learned they had really cool bikes with motors on them, so that's the way to go. Um, the other thing that I did was last night I went to the um, transportation town hall meeting. There's a lot of stuff coming up. Pay attention. They want $5.09 billion over the next 10 years for transportation upgrades. And that's basically just to stay at the status quo. Um, there's two big projects. The Abernathy Bridge expansion all the way out to Stafford is kind of percolated to the top. I think I've mentioned that before. Um, but they're looking at a whole different way of funding it, which is going to be gas taxes, registration fee increases, and congestion fees. So stay tuned on that. It's, it's not going to be a cheap, cheap ticket for us. Um, and that's all that I have. Mayor, I've got one more thing I yes. forgot. Uh, something big, and, and I haven't been around here a lot in the last three months, but a big thing happened at the we now have uh, a place to pe keep people during the day and the night uh, up to four beds in an apartment building right next door with the potential plan of having another uh, area with four more beds and uh, one of the concerns by the fire department and our new chief, Tom Connor, has been our response times. And uh, this is a, a method to try to improve that, that we can have up to four people right there at the site at all times. So just want to let everybody know that. This is the first time I've seen that. In the 40 years I've been around here, 45 or whatever it is now. So that's it. All right. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion. We adjourn. Second. Motion made by Councillor Linda Nee, seconded by Councillor Neil Reisner. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Meeting adjourned at 8.32 p.m. Sure.